Hi everyone, this is Dr. G. Saiti Datar, Team MDS Conquer. So now I'm going to discuss about the peculiar signs which have been exhibited by many diseases. I think it's quite important for your exam because many diseases have their own unique or peculiar signs which I think you need to know them clearly. So I've arranged them in an alphabetical order. So we'll discuss one by one. So coming to the first one, the Asbo Hansen sign, I think you're quite familiar with this. So which states that when there is a bulle and when we apply pressure on that bulle, the bulle will spread laterally. So it is also called as bulle spread phenomena and this is seen with pemphigus vulgaris. Okay, so as by Hansen's sign also called as bulle spread phenomena. So when a pressure is applied on the bulle, the bulle will spread laterally. Okay, so this is called as a Asbo Hansen sign seen with pemphigus vulgaris. Next is the auspice sign. So I think even you know this. So this is seen with psoriasis. So here you can see the scales of the skin. So when the successive layers of this scaly skin is being removed, then you can find the bleeding points. So which is nothing but the auspice sign. And this is seen with the patient suffering from skin disease called as a psoriasis. Okay, so when the successive layers of the scaly skin is being removed, you can find out the bleeding points there. Okay, so this is the auspice sign. Next, the battle sign, very important because in an emergency ward, if you find a patient with a head trauma and if you find the ecchymosis in the mastoid area or a bruise in the mastoid area, then it is called as a battle sign, which is quite important because the patient has to be immediately attended. So this occurs after or followed by a head trauma. So it's nothing but ecchymosis or the bruise which is seen in the mastoid region. So that is the battle sign. Next sign is a bell sign. So bell sign or a bell's phenomena. So here when a patient is trying or when he attempts to close his eye, then there is upward or outward movement of the eye. Okay, so here you can see clearly the patient is having difficulty in closing the eye completely, right? So that is nothing but the bell sign or the bell's phenomena. So it is seen with the facial palsy. Okay, and when it occurs bilaterally, you can see with the golden bar syndrome. Okay, it is seen with golden bar syndrome. So here it becomes even more prominent when the orbicularis oculi muscle becomes even weak. If it becomes more weak, then you can, this sign will be even more prominent. Okay, so it's also called as Bell's phenomena. So here the patient will have little difficulty or inability to close his eye. Okay, next sign being the black beard or the Lincoln sign. So here if you see the picture there is complete darkness or the blackness of the beard. So this is seen with the Paget's disease. Okay, so there is increased uptake of the radionucleotide followed by bone scintigraphy. So because of that the beard becomes or the look of the mandible looks completely black which is also called as a black beard sign also referred to as a Lincoln sign. So this is seen with the Pages disease because it shows an increased uptake of the radionucleotide followed by a bone scintigraphy. So this is a black beard or the Lincoln sign and there's one more uh, disease where it shows just the Lincoln sign which is nothing but the Marfan syndrome. Okay, so which is nothing but there is excessive popliteal artery pulsations that can be seen as a consequence of hemodynamic effects because of aortic regurgitation that is seen with Marfan syndrome. So black beard or Lincoln sign also seen with the Paget's disease because of the increased uptake of the radionucleotide can also be seen with only the black, uh, only the Lincoln sign can also be seen with the Marfan syndrome because of the excessive popliteal artery pulsations. Okay, as a consequence of the aortic changes which causes uh, cause those hemodynamic changes changes, there is excessive popliteal artery pulsations in those patients. So that is seen also with the Marfan syndrome. So Lincoln sign both with Marfan syndrome and Paget's disease but black beard sign with the Paget's disease. Next bonbon sign. So bonbon sign it's nothing but when the patient protrudes his or her tongue then uh, there will be bulge of the cheek and that is seen with dyskinesia of tongue. So when there is dyskinesia of the tongue, then when the patient protrudes his or her tongue, there will be bulging of the cheeks. That is nothing but the bonbon sign. 
So next is a butterfly sign. So here you can see there is a classic shape of a butterfly where the rash spreads over the malar area and also spreads over the bridge of the nose and the nasolabial fold is being spared. So this is nothing but the butterfly sign or the butterfly rash which is seen with patients suffering from systemic lupus erythematosus. Okay, so this is nothing but the butterfly sign. Next sign is a buttonhole sign. So you can see there are some lesions on the skin. So when a digital pressure is applied on these lesions, they go in. And when a pressure is released, they immediately pop out. Okay, so when a pressure is applied, they move in. And when the pressure is released, they pop out. And this is seen with neurofibromatosis type 1. Okay, so this is seen with patients suffering from neurofibromatosis type 1, which is nothing but the buttonhole sign. Next, swatch it sign. So here you can see it's pretty clear. There is contraction of the facial muscles when the facial nerve is being tapped just anterior to the ear. Okay, so this is seen with hypocalcemia also, or the tetany. Okay, so but it is not like a pathognomic for tetany. It can also be seen with in, uh, 10 to 25 percent of the normal individuals as well. But yes, it is a sign for the hypocalcemia or hypoparathyroidism or tetany. So it's nothing but the Swatchkit sign. When uh, facial nerve is being tapped anterior to the ear, then there will be contraction of the facial muscles. Okay. Next sign is a cluster of jewel sign. So you can see there is a cluster of the bulle. So this is seen with linear IgA disease. So which is an autoimmune disease where the bulle or the vesicles are arranged in a herpetic form fashion. Okay, so this is seen in autoimmune disease called as a linear IgA dermatosis or the linear IgA disease. Okay, so cluster of jewel sign seen with the linear IgA disease where the bullae are arranged in a fashion of a herpetiform manner. Okay, they are arranged in a herpetiform fashion. Next is a Coleman sign. So here it is a sublingual hematoma which is seen followed by a mandibular fracture. Very important sign which is commonly observed by the oral maxillofacial surgeons. So there is a sublingual hematoma which is being followed by a mandibular fracture which is a Coleman sign. Next sign is a cracker sign. So here you can see the patient will not be able to chew the crackers properly. So this is seen with the patient suffering from dry mouth or xerostomia. Okay, so it is one of the tests that is being done for xerostomia, which is nothing but the cracker sign. Next is a Krauss sign. So which clearly shows there is axial freckling. Okay, so there is axillary freckling which is nothing but the Krauss sign. Even this is seen with neurofibromatosis. Okay, even this is seen with neurofibromatosis. Very important sign. As per the Viva point of view also, it's quite important. And even for your exam, it's quite important. So what is Krauss sign? So axillary freckling, which is seen with the neurofibromatosis. Next sign is a flag sign. So there is a discoloration in the hair as you can see in this baby. So there is complete discoloration of the hair and the discoloration is in the form of a band perpendicular to the long axis. So that discoloration is seen with severe malnutrition kits which like example is squashia or cur. Okay, severe malnourished child it is seen. So there is complete discoloration of the hair which is formed in the form of a band which is called as a flag sign which is seen with uh, patients or uh, kids with severe malnutrition like Kwashiorkor. Okay, so this is nothing but the flag sign. Next sign is a Forschheimer sign where you can see small red spots, the junction of the hard and soft palate and this is seen with the German measles. Okay, so it is seen with the German measles where you can see small red spots in the junction of the hard and soft palate. This is nothing but the Forschheimer sign. Next is a Garrington sign. So it's com it's also quite important. So where you can see symmetrical widening of the pedial space. So symmetrical widening of pedial. Okay, so that is seen with osteo 
sarcoma. Symmetrical widening of the pedial space which is called as a Garrington sign and it is seen with patients suffering from osteosarcoma. Okay, so this is nothing but the Garrington sign. Next sign is a Gorlin sign. So it's pretty clear. So Gorlin sign is nothing but the ability of the patient to touch the tip of the nose with the top tip with his tip of the tongue. So patient can touch his tip of the nose with the tip of the tongue so that it's so flexible. So that is seen with Ehrlich Danlos syndrome. Ehrlich Danlos syndrome, right? Okay, so this is nothing but the Gorlin sign. Very important sign. Okay, seen with Ehrlich Danlos syndrome. Next, Gatron sign. So, Gatron sign, if you see the picture, there are some red rashes, erythematous rashes, quite scaly sometimes, okay, which are seen over the joints on the fingers. Okay, so this is seen with dermatomyositis. Okay, so this is seen with patients suffering from dermatomyositis. Okay, next is a Gretage sign. So, here it is seen with psoriasis again. So, besides the auspice sign, the Gretage sign is also quite important for psoriasis. So, here the scales, when they are tried to like grate with a glass slide, they get assenuated. Okay, the scales on the skin get assenuated on grating with a glass slide, glass slide, which is nothing but the Gretage sign, and that is seen with psoriasis. Okay. Coming to the next sign. Next sign is a Guerin sign. So Guerin sign is nothing but ecchymosis which is seen at the greater palatine vessels area. Okay, that is seen followed by the Lefort 1 fracture. Okay, very important Lefort 1 fracture where we can see ecchymosis in the palate at the greater palatine vessel area. Okay, so that is nothing but the Guerin sign. Next sign, hanging drop sign. So when you see this picture, there is a polypoid soft tissue that is hanging down from the orbital floor. So this is nothing but the hanging drop sign, which is seen with the blowout fractures. Okay, so hanging drop sign, which is seen with the blowout fractures, where a polypoid soft tissue is seen as a radio opacity hanging down from the orbital floor, seen with the blowout fractures. Coming to the next sign, which is called as a heliotrope sign. Okay, so heliotrope sign, as you can see in the picture, there is a violaceous or a dusky erythematous skin eruptions, which are seen in the periorbital region, which may or may not be associated with edema. And even this is seen with dermatomyositis. So there is a violaceous or dusky skin eruptions without, with, with or without edema involving the periorbital area symmetrically in patients suffering from dermatomyositis which is called as the heliotrope sign. Okay, coming to the next sign, Higo Minakis sign where there is irregular thickening of the clavicle. So irregular thickening of the clavicle you can see. So that is seen with congenital syphilis. Okay, so it is nothing but the Higo Minakis sign. Next, Hoagland sign, very important again. So here you can see early and transient edema of upper eyelid. Okay, so you can see in the picture there is edema of the upper eyelid and this is seen with infectious mononucleosis. This is seen with patients suffering from infectious mononucleosis. So this is nothing but the Hoagland sign. Where there is transient edema of the upper eyelid, patients suffering from infectious mononucleosis. Next, Hutchinson sign, which is different from the Hutchinson's teeth or Hutchinson's triad. Okay, which is Hutchinson's sign. Okay, where there is vesicles, you can see at the tip of the nose and also over the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve which is preceded by the herpes zoster infection okay so here also the patient will be unresponsive pupil patient will have an unresponsive pupil besides that there will be vesicles at the nose as well as the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve so this is the hutchinson sign which is different from the hutchinson's triad which is seen with the congenital syphilis so do note this down next sign is a jellic Jelinek sign, you can see, 
wherein you can see hyperpigmented periorbital area. So the periorbital area is completely hyperpigmented and this is seen with Graves disease. Okay, so entire hyperpigmented periorbital region seen in both the eyes and that is seen with the Graves disease. Next sign is a lesser prelate sign. Here you can see sudden or abrupt appearance of seborrheic eruptions seen over the skin and that increase in number and this is seen associated with malignant acanthosis nigricans. Okay. It is seen with malignant acanthosis nigricans which is called as a lesser trillet sign and where you can see abrupt seborrheic eruptions on the skin which increase in number and that is seen with malignant acanthosis nigricans. Next sign being the hermetic sign. So wherein you can see the patient will have electric shock like sensation on the flexion of the neck. Okay and this is seen with patients suffering from multiple sclerosis. Okay, so electric shock like sensation will be there in those patients because of the flexion of the neck which is called as a hermetic sign, the L is silent. So this is seen with patients suffering from multiple sclerosis. Next sign is a lipstick sign, you are well aware of it. It is seen with patients suffering from xerostomia and all conditions which have xerostomia like Jogren syndrome. So wherein the lipstick which is applied on the lips tend to touch or tend to be appeared on the upper incisors. Okay, so it's nothing but the lipstick sign. Next sign is a Mobius sign where the patients will have the inability to maintain the convergence of the eye. So there is inability to maintain the convergence of the eye. So even this is seen with patients suffering from the Graves disease. Okay, so the Mobius sign inability to maintain the convergence of the eye seen with the Graves disease. Next Metinia sign. So here you can see there is increased facility of the patient to avert the upper eyelid. So the patient can easily avert the upper eyelid. So that is again seen with fle uh, high flexible disease or syndrome which is nothing but the airless Danlos syndrome. Okay, so here the patients can easily or there is increased facility to avert the upper eyelid. So it is nothing but the metineous sign. Next sign, the nickel key sign. So wherein we apply pressure or wherein we touch a area where there is no lesion, you can see a new lesion that is developed there because the superficial layers will tend to separate from the deeper layers. So new lesion appears there which is nothing but the nickel key sign seen again with the pemphigus vulgaris. Right? So the superficial layers separate from the deeper layers. So you can see a new lesion there. Next sign is a Ollendorf sign also called as a Bushkis Ollendorf sign and this is seen with patients suffering from secondary syphilis and and cutaneous vasculitis okay and cutaneous vasculitis quite important the Bushkis Ollendorf sign so wherein there will be deep dermal tenderness on applying pressure with a pinhead okay so deep dermal tenderness will be there in patients with Secondary syphilis or cutaneous vasculitis, which is nothing but the Ollendorf sign. Next sign is a Pastia sign where you can see red streaks over the skin fold area and that is seen with scarlet fever. Pastia lines or Pastia sign seen with scarlet fever. The reddish streaks or reddish lines or rash over the skin folds. Okay, so this is seen with the scarlet fever. Next, Patrick Yesudian sign. So, where you can see melanotic macules. Okay, and this is seen with neurofibromatosis type 1. Melanotic macules are seen on the skin over the fingers, and this is seen with neurofibromatosis type 1, and it is called as a Patrick Yesudian sign. Coming to the next sign, it is Pemberton sign. Okay, so here it is seen with patients having goiter. So to evaluate the venous obstruction. So how the sign is being performed or what the patient has to be asked to do for is the patient is asked to bilaterally elevate his or her arms followed by which you can observe a facial plethora. Okay, so this is seen with goiter where the thyroid will enlarged thyroid will 
cause an obstruction over the thoracic inlet that causes the increased venous pressure so which results in this particular sign that is a Pemberton sign which is done to evaluate the venous obstruction in the goiter patients okay in the patients having goiter so Pemberton sign quite important for you next sign raccoon sign where you can see periorbital ecchymosis even this is seen followed by a head trauma Next sign, reverse namaskar sign. As you can see the lady, she is so flexible, her joints are so flexible, she can do a reverse namaskar and even that is seen in patients suffering from a high flexible, uh, where the joints are highly flexible, which is nothing but the Ehlers danlos syndrome. Okay, so the Gorlin sign, the Gorlin sign, the reverse namaskar sign, the Metinia sign, all these signs are seen with the Ehlers danlos syndrome. Next, the Rinse kind. So rinse sign where you can see a thick sclerotic band and commonly it is seen in the proximal femur and this is seen with fibrous dysplasia. Okay, very important sign exhibited by the patients having fibrous dysplasia and the common site is a proximal femur where you can see a thick sclerotic band surrounding a radiolucent lesion and that is nothing but a rinse sign seen with fibrous dysplasia. Next, a Romberg sign. So here it is actually to evaluate ataxia, which is sensory in nature. Okay. So here when a patient tries to put his feet together and when he tries to open his eyes, he falls down with eyes closed. Okay. So that is nothing but the Romberg sign. Okay. Next sign is a rugger jersey sign. So wherein you can see the prominent end plates that gives an alternate sclerotic and the lucent bands, right? And this is seen with hyperparathyroidism. So it is seen in patients with hyperparathyroidism, very important rugger jersey sign, wherein you can see alternate sclerotic and the lucent, band, lucent bands. Next sign is a slap put cheek sign wherein you can see with patients or kids suffering from erythema infectiosum or also called as fifth disease okay fifth disease or erythema infectiosum okay so which is being infected by human parvovirus Okay, so you can see the kid having a slap cheek appearance. So this is seen with human parvovirus, also called as fifth disease or erythema infectiosum. Next, slip sign, quite aware of it. So it is seen with lipoma. So where the lipoma tends to slip on applying pressure. So that's nothing but the slip sign. Next sign is a Steinberg or the thumb sign. So wherein when the patient clasps his thumb uh, in, and clenches his hand, then the thumb is clearly visible or it's clearly appreciated medially to the little finger. So this is nothing but the thumb sign or the Steinberg sign seen with Marfan's syndrome. Okay, seen with the Marfan's syndrome. Okay, next. Samit sign where you can see a raggy scales or raggy cuticles and that is again seen with dermatomyositis okay that is nothing but the samit sign where you can see a raggy cuticles next the shawl sign wherein you can see an erythematous rash over the skin about the neck or over the chest and also over the above the shoulders like a shawl which is again seen with dermatomyositis okay Next is a Stelvac sign. So wherein the patient will have little difficulty in blinking the eye because of the exapthalmosis. And this is seen with Graves orbitopathy or ophthalmopathy. Okay, so it's seen with the orbitopathy or the Graves disease. So wherein because of the exapthalmosis, the patient will have difficulty in blinking the eye. So which is called as a Stelvac sign. So yes, uh, this is a Strauss sign. So next is a Strauss sign. So as you can see here, when a patient is having facial palsy, injection of the pilocarpin is done in order to observe sweating on the affected side. Okay, so first the sweating occurs on the affected side, later it can occur on the other side. So this is to test the facial palsy. So it's nothing but the Strauss sign. So injection of the pilocarpin is done in order to observe the sweating on the affected side of the facial palsy. Okay, next sign is a tin tack sign which is seen with DLE, 
that is discoid lupus erythematosus also seen with seborrheic dermatitis so here when the adherent scales are removed then the underlying surface shows horny eruptions which is called as a tin tack sign also called as a carpet track sign okay also called as carpet track sign okay so this is seen in patients with dle okay so when the adherent scales are removed the underlying surface shows horny eruptions okay so this is nothing but the tin tack sign or the carpet track sign very very important next tongue blade sign so when the tongue blade is adhered or when it's applied or when it's pressed over the buccal buccal mucosa in a patient suffering from a xerostomia then it adheres to the buccal mucosa okay so that is nothing but the tongue blade sign next the trap door sign again it is nothing but seen in the blowout fracture so wherein you can see a polypoid soft tissue which is falling or when it is uh, it is seen to be uh, dropping down from the orbital flow okay so that is nothing but the trap door also called as a hanging drop sign which is seen with the blowout fractures next sign is a trossier sign wherein you can see a palpable left supraclavicular node which is called as a verco node okay seen with gastrointestinal cancers or malignancies okay it is seen with gastrointestinal cancers or malignancies so it is palpable left supraclavicular node also called as a verco node wherein you can see this trossier sign which is seen with the gastrointestinal tract malignancies okay this is nothing but the trossier sign next is it trossier sign so difference you can see this is just a second so here it is trossier sign this is trossier sign okay spelling difference is also there so this is nothing but carpopedal spasm which occurs because of inflating the blood pressure cuff above the systolic pressure for 3 minutes and uh, for more than 3 minutes and this is seen again with hypoparathyroidism or tetany okay so this is carpo pedal spasm okay seen when tetany okay so this is nothing but the trossier sign note the difference between trossier sign and trossier sign okay next ugly duckling sign very irregular melanotic mole will be there okay hyperpigmented irregular mole so which is looks very ugly and this is seen with malignant melanoma okay seen with malignant melanoma so yes the next sign is a hutch of sign where there will be worsening of the neurological symptoms in multiple sclerosis or any demyelinating diseases so there is worsening of the neurological symptoms on exposure to hot weather or having a very hot bath okay so that is nothing but the hutch of sign wherein you can see worsening of the neurological symptoms in patients with multiple sclerosis or demyelinating diseases next v sign you can see the rash erythematous rash above the chest okay so that's again seen with the dermatomyositis shawl sign and the v sign which is seen with the dermatomyositis okay next is a walter murdock or the wrist sign so when the wrist of the opposite hand is held to the uh, one hand then the thumb and the fingers will overlap each other which is said to be positive and this is seen again with the marfan's syndrome okay so this is nothing but the wrist sign or the walter murdock murdock sign okay so yes so uh, we are done with almost all the important signs so what i exactly want to suggest is so note the signs as per the diseases as well so for example what all are the signs present in dermatomyositis what are the signs in graves disease what are the signs with marfan syndrome what are the signs with ehlers danlos syndrome that will be easy for you during your uh, revision okay so you can just like divide like that and even you can try to remember like that so all the important signs have been covered i would like to give you few questions or few signs and you have to answer them you can answer in the comment session or you can answer in the group so three signs i want from you one is what is fountain sign and where do you see next what is premalata sign and where do you see and third what is hanging curtain sign and where do you see okay so these are the three more signs i would like you to answer so number 1 fountain sign number 2 premalata sign number 3 hanging curtain sign okay so i would like to get the answers from you as well okay thank you